The Activision Blizzard saga is far from over, ladies and gentlemen. You may recall that not too far back, Activision Blizzard were faced with a massive DFEH lawsuit after the government organization uncovered a culture of harassment, misconduct, abuse, and discrimination. Executives responded in the worst way possible with statements that were empty at best and outright dismissive at worst, and it led to a whole bunch of backlash. The community protests that developers engaged in walkouts and strikes and are issuing demands to executives. There are lawsuits from the government, from investors, sponsors are pulling out, and Activision Blizzard has been doing damage control for a while now. They've been firing scapegoats like J. Allen Brack and the Diablo 4 director who were rightfully fired, but the people truly responsible, the executives who should face consequences, are still in their ivory tower. Bobby Kotick, Fran Townsend, and other politicians who worked in like the Bush era and were proponents for some of the worst things possible. And it's just been a whole crap fest for Activision Blizzard. Now, developers have been going out of their way to change in-game references to abusers like Jesse McCree is getting a name change. World of Warcraft is removing references to Alex Afrasiabi. Meanwhile, executives continue to pretend like they have the worker's best interest in mind while on the side hiring organizations like WilmerHale, which is a union-busting firm that Bobby Kotick tried to present as a firm that's there to fight for the rights of workers, to listen to them, to take their feedback and improve the company that way. That's not it at all. That's not what Wilmer Hale is known for. And there's a conflict of interest in that Wilmer Hale has been known to protect not just corporations at large, but also specifically Activision Blizzard and have close ties with executives like Fran Townsend. And all the while, executives have still not addressed employees' demands, have not taken them into consideration seriously. And even more recently, the DFVH actually had to revise the lawsuit because Activision Blizzard were found shredding documents and destroying evidence evidence because that's what every innocent corporation does, right? And alongside that, we now, for today's story, have further scrutiny from a government organization that's taking a complaint from a union and issuing that to Activision Blizzard. So let's dive right in. The following information was relayed via Bloomberg's latest article titled Activision Blizzard's Labor Woes Grow on Union Complaint to NLRB. The NLRB, for those who don't know, are the U.S. National Labor Relations Board. And this organization is representing a union that has filed a federal labor board complaint against Activision Blizzard Inc., opening a new front in the legal battle over workplace rights at the video game maker. The complaint was filed on September 10th by the Communication Workers of America. The union in question that is taking the fight directly to Activision accuses Activision of violating federal labor law through coercive rules, actions, and statements, according to the agency's docket. It also alleges the company illegally interrogated staff. Activision didn't immediately reply to a request for comment. So first things first, a few entities to detail. First up, we got the National Labor Relations Board, and on their website, they will detail the National Labor Relations Act. Congress enacted the National Labor Relations Act in 1935 to protect the rights of employees and employers to encourage collective bargaining and to curtail certain private sector labor and management practices, which can harm the general welfare of workers, businesses, and the U.S. economy. So this is a pretty serious government organization that's been around for a while. On Wikipedia, you can find another summary, the National National Labor Relations Board is an independent agency of the federal government of the United States with responsibilities for enforcing U.S. labor law in relation to collective bargaining and unfair labor practices. Under the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, it supervises elections for labor union representation and can investigate and remedy unfair labor practices, of which there are plenty at Activision Blizzard. Beyond the discriminatory and abusive workplace, you've got things like payment discrepancy, based on gender and race and whatnot. 
that employees have spoken out about. As for the CWA, you can find a summary about this union on their official website, which reads as follows: CWA represents workers in private and public sector employment in 1,200 chartered CWA local unions. CWA members work in telecommunications and information technology, the airline industry, news media, broadcast and cable television, education, healthcare, public service and education, law enforcement, manufacturing, and other fields. This is a union that was originally founded back in 1938. It was formerly known as the National Federation of Telephone Workers, and then it expanded to become, in 1947, the Communications Workers of America. This is a union that represents about 700,000 members in both the private and public sectors, making it one of the biggest unions in America. And if you look at the history of strikes and protests that they've been involved in, it's quite an extensive list. And again, some pretty major organizations: AT&T, Verizon, U.S. West. And AT&T and Verizon come up quite a bit here. Bell System. And now, seeing what's happening with Activision Blizzard, this organization is now pursuing that company, and they actually published a press release detailing their goals and their stands on all of this. Employees of Activision Blizzard file unfair labor practice charge against the gaming company. And below that, you'll find a statement that expresses support for the ABK, the Activision Blizzard King Workers Alliance, that was formed in response to the. Executive's negligence on the matter of a harassment-filled, abuse-filled, misconduct-filled, discrimination-filled work environment. In support of game developers at Activision Blizzard King, a cross-platform gaming company based in Santa Monica, the Communications Workers of America (CWA) has formally filed. ULP, which stands for Union Labor Practice, filed union labor practice charges against the company for worker intimidation and union busting. We've already seen signs of that when Bobby Kotick hired Wilmer Hale to conduct a review of our policies and procedures to ensure that we have and maintain best practices to promote a respectful and inclusive workplace. This work will begin immediately. Yada yada yada. All this bullshit about how Wilmer Hale is there to protect. The employees to do right by them when they are known, well known, to be union busters and to have a track record of protecting corporations. That's what they're there for. That's what they're hired for. ABK workers staged a groundbreaking walkout over the summer to draw attention to the disturbing working conditions in the gaming industry at large, including but not limited to ableist, racist, and sexist cultural practices, workplace discrimination, and pay inequity. And that walkout was something that I covered in a previous. Video when that was going down. Despite a risk of retaliation, Activision Blizzard King workers launched a better ABK on July 23rd as a strategic organizing effort to unite developers behind a shared set of concerns. Employees use their social media platforms to organize with one another and share their demands to the world, including fans, fellow game developers, and consumers. Indeed, we have seen not only Activision Blizzard developers speak out, but developers from other Companies and studios speak out with them and show solidarity. Ubisoft developers actually released their own letter because they're not satisfied with how Ubisoft has responded to the exposure of all these allegations of misconduct and abuse and harassment. And so they're saying we are in full support of what they're doing, and hopefully the industry at large will come together to enact industry-wide change. Because this bullshit has gone on long enough, the statement then proceeds to castigate Activision Blizzard. Instead of responding to these demands, Activision Blizzard management is using coercive tactics to attempt to prevent its employees from exercising their rights to stand together and demand a more equitable, sustainable, and diverse. Workplace. It is their right as workers to organize for a work environment free from abuse, discrimination, and sexual harassment, and this right is protected by federal labor law. Indeed, it is. So while CEO Bobby Kotick is trying to pretend like this is shocking news to him, while he tries to pretend to express that he appreciates people's courage, how every voice allegedly matters at Activision Blizzard, how he's trying to protect employees by hiring Wilmer Hale. The company you don't want to hire if you want to protect employees. While he and executives backtrack the public press release that they release, saying that all of these stories about harassment, discrimination are out of context, that the DFVH was misrepresenting the facts when employees were corroborating the facts. We are learning that looking past the surface level, Activision Blizzard, on top of shredding evidence. They have also been engaging in coercive tactics with their employees, either probing for information or trying to suppress them speaking out. 
And now the CWA has stepped in to not only highlight the fact that Activision Blizzard has failed to protect their employees for the past couple of decades, but also to really highlight that they are still prioritizing the self-preservation of the company and its executives at the expense of employees and progress for employees' work environment. The press release then concludes with a statement from Tom Smith, National Organizing Director at CWA, who said, We are very inspired by the bravery of ABK workers, and we will always stand shoulder to shoulder with workers fighting harassment, assault, and discrimination. Management could have responded with humility and a willingness to take necessary steps to address the horrid conditions some ABK workers have faced. Instead, Activision Blizzard's response to righteous workers' activity was surveillance, in intimidation, and hiring notorious union busters like Wilmer Hale. The National Labor Relations Board under the Biden administration has made it clear that it will hold companies accountable whenever they break the law. We have filed these charges to ensure that the actions of ABK management will not go unanswered. Music to my ears. As for how this legal proceeding will go from here, according to Bloomberg, complaints filed with the Labor Board are investigated by regional offices and, if found to have merit and not settled, can be prosecuted by the agency's general counsel and heard by administrative law judges. And then from there, the next stage comes in the form of the rulings being able to be appealed to NLRB members in Washington, D.C., and from there to federal court. So this thing can climb quite a bit. Now, Activision Blizzard, with their expensive lawyers and with the politicians in their pockets, no doubt will fight this vigorously. So this is going to be a process that will take months and years to fully develop. But if this is a battle that Activision Blizzard loses, the NLRB can require remedies such as posting of notices and reversals of policies or punishments. So they could force Activision Blizzard to meet employees' demands and have them change their policies accordingly. Now, what the NLBR can't do is have the authority to impose punitive damages, so they cannot punish Activision Blizzard by making them pay a sum for the damages that they've caused. But Activision Blizzard has so much money anyway, where that is the least of concerns. What needs to happen, what is most urgent, is for policies within the company to change to reflect what employees would deem a safer work environment. There are four demands that are key for Activision Blizzard employees, which include Activision ditching mandatory arbitration, new practice for recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and promotion that's agreed upon by employees, the publication of data on relative compensation, promotion rates, and salary ranges to ensure that there is no pay discrepancy and so that there is transparency on that front, and the hiring of a third-party organization to audit the company's leadership that is agreed upon by a diversity task force. Surprising no one, Activision Blizzard didn't capitulate on any of these fronts, as that would mean giving employees power and that's the last thing that corpos want. But with mounting pressure from workers and developers within the company, from their own community, from sponsors, from investors, and now government organizations, both the DFEH and now the Communications Workers of America Union in partnership with the National Labor Relations Board, with this multi-front assault demanding accountability on the part of a leadership that failed its employees, Activision Blizzard may very well be pressured into finally capitulating to employees' demands or may very well be forced to by the law. Though, of course, how all of this develops remains to be seen. Only time will tell. Until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest developments surrounding Activision Blizzard, namely now the involvement of the National Labor Relations Board, which filed a complaint on behalf of the CWA Union, one of the biggest unions in America. Share your thoughts below and and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.